it's Robin R. Silent Crafts and welcome to my studio. This is my Whip It Wednesday video where I'm going to show you the crafty goodness that I worked on this week. I only have a few projects but they took up most of my week. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me on the live stream. I had a lot of fun working on our turkey and maple leaf project. While waiting for the live stream to start I took some scrappy half square triangles. They were the bonus half square triangles from an old quilt that I did many years ago. I think it was one of the schnibbles. Maybe it was called lanterns or something like that. I did it in orange and black, obviously, as all these are orange and black. And some of them aren't quite even. You can see there's a big space down here. They were all different sizes. This is before I learned the value of making sure all of them are cut the same. Use a quarter inch ruler and stuff and everything will be nice and even. But I'm going to go ahead and square these up and just turn them into some type of flying geese. Whether they're all even, doesn't matter. Whether they lose the points, I don't care. These so far have been looking good, but there are some that aren't quite perfect. But I don't really care because of what they are. So the, you, it's kind of hard to see. Once it's in a quilt, it'll be less noticeable. But these don't all line up right here where the two oranges come together because they're all different sizes. There's, there's all kinds of wonkiness coming on. These are so old. I didn't know really how to make a half square triangle. Definitely didn't trim these up, but I didn't know how to trim them up properly. But now I do, and you can find those videos here in my YouTube channel. You can just check the playlist. I show how to make a half square triangle, how to square it up, all of those fun things that we don't really like to do when we have to trim and square everything. But you can see when you look at it, if that I bring it up super close, you can see. But once it comes back here and once it gets sewn in with other ones, it's not going to be as noticeable. These were just sitting on a shelf over here. I happen to keep my pajamas right on top of them. So when I go to grab them for bed or put them away in the morning or whatever, I always set them on top of this bag that had these in them. And it's just been calling my name. So instead of doing some of the things I should be doing or I plan to do or I wanted to do, these got their time. Now, in the times in between here and there, I'll get them trimmed up. Maybe there's 20 minutes before lunch break. I'm hungry, but it's not quite time yet. Or it's about time to shut down for the night. But I can always trim these up after dinner. Just take an hour, half hour here, 10 minutes there, whatever. Trim them all up and eventually I will sew them into something. Now for the live stream, we made the small six and a half inch maple leaf blocks. We did the really simple version and we did a one of the techniques for doing the stems. Now this is from the Lori Holt blog post. If you check out last week's live stream, it'll have all the links in it. But I did what everyone suggested and I turned it into a table runner. I really love the way this turned out. The dark gray probably sticks out a little bit more than I'd like. If I'd have had this blue, which was in a charm pack, so I didn't have that, that might have balanced it all out. I haven't finished it. I did put this gnome fabric on the back. It has a gnome with turkeys, which is why I grabbed it. So it's a bunch of Thanksgiving and harvest type stuff. You can see that fun fabric. I think this was from my advent box from my friend from last year. Or maybe I just picked it up when I was out fabric shopping. I don't remember. But I'm pretty sure it came from the advent box. I haven't finished it because I've been sitting here thinking about what to put for the binding. I didn't want to just do any binding. I've been testing out different fabrics. As you know, I don't have my whole fabric stash here. So I'm limited on what I have here which is a good thing and a bad thing. It limits the choices so you don't feel overwhelmed. But if you know your fabric stash, maybe it's somewhere else and you know of the perfect fabric and it's just not here. So I worked on this on Sunday and I've just been thinking about it and thinking about it and I do my best thinking in the shower because I came up with a fabric, but I didn't choose that fabric. When I was looking for that fabric, I came across this one. It's like that purpley blue color and it's got that silver overlay with all the designs on it and to test it out I just did the little thing where you put it on like this and I thought okay that brings out all of the blues and it's not that dark and it's not super light because I tried different grays and stuff with the polka dots and all and that dark gray there was definitely too much 
So I thought that is the one that I'm going to go with. So I like the way that looks. So I'll go ahead and do that today. I do the inch and a half single fold binding on all of my small projects like this. So I think that's going to work out great and it won't use up all the fabric. So it'll be fun. I actually have this in a few different colors. Thank you to the person that shared it with me. It's going to work great with the project from someone else's leftover charm squares that they shared with me at this house here. So I was really grateful to have that. I've been making a lot of projects with that little scrap bundle you sent me. And there's still bits left in the charm pack that I can play with. There's some pieces that were cut out and some strips that from when I was cutting things and just different random chunks plus some full charm squares. So that's going to be fun. I do really enjoy just taking bits finding blocks and putting them together like this. I don't need to have a whole quilt pattern. I don't need you to plan my project for me, but I did enjoy just going on Lori Holt's blog and just using her designs and matching them up. She actually said she made the maple leaf first and then she made the turkey based on that design. You can kind of see where it's right here. If you just put a stem, then this body is the maple leaf. So I thought that was a really fun. Oh, and of course, forget the best part. These are the quarter square triangles that when we did the stitch and flip here or created the half square triangles, I saved them all and I turned them into the quarter square triangles and I used that down here. I just added a little bit of a fabric border on either side to separate it. I actually stitched this down together and I had everything sewn together and I had to get the seam ripper out and take it apart because I just knew that it needed that separation. So I'm going to finish this up and I will be putting this in the shop hopefully this week. Speaking of the shop, I did put up a shop update. I finished my two uh, aqua and pink projects. So here it is all framed up. I was going to use a scrappy binding to put this all together. I actually had it all cut out in a variety of fabrics in the aquas and the reds and the back of one of these but then when i started to lay it all out and look at it and decide where to start to put the binding down first i decided it's not going to work i knew it needed an aqua so i went in and i took a little bit off of my little aqua stash and sometimes it's hard to cut into those fabrics right so here is the present aqua binding I originally had this backing on the tree. I liked the different colored candies and it matched all the colors in the tree, but I decided I found a better fabric for the back of the tree, so I switched it over to the presents. So here is the tree. I think you'll agree that it really just needed that aqua fabric, that it just works out perfectly for it. And on the back, I had to piece this fabric together, but it has all these pink and aqua and red trees. And again, it just is like the perfect fabric for this one. I had to use it. Even looks good. If you want, if you wanted to have just this fabric as a pillow with the aqua, I think that looks great together too. But I really love the way these turned out. Both of them are in the shop. You can purchase them individually or as a set. I almost forgot I finished those. Now I did have some projects left over from last year for the Christmas season that if they didn't, when they didn't sell, I went ahead and pulled them to put them back out this year. So many of you will remember the elf projects that I have. So this is a larger zipper pouch with the handle. I have two of the elves. Now I also made Santa ones last year. I don't have any of the Santa bags of anything left. It's just the elf ones this year. I do have a different idea for the Santa project. I have some of the fabric. I just haven't had the time to sit down and do it. Other things have taken priority. There's a little elf coin zipper pouch. Several of these sold last year. They have that candy cane stripe. I was talking about this recently. I love the red and white stripes, but I'm not a huge fan when they put that little strip of green in there. I didn't really care for those candy canes either. So I know what it came from, but, and it's fine. It just works great on the inside. I wouldn't want it on the outside. I also had a special order last year for snowman zipper pouches. So I made extras. So it's a snowman and this is the little scarf. So he's got his eyes and his carrot nose, the coal eyes all applique down in a variety of fabrics. 
These are all in the shop. You should be able to see them right at the beginning. Sometimes when things renew, they automatically renew and they push everything else down. So if you have an idea of what you want, you can go to the little tabs above and just look at zipper pouches. That way you don't have to sit there and scroll through page after page unless you're just randomly looking to see what's there and not know exactly what you want. So everything's all set in the shop. I announced it on my Instagram and also here on the community tab. Now my last big project was my stack of fabric postcards that I'm working on. I have a couple special ones that need to go out, just generalized ones. This is actually a flannel fabric that I just picked up. It's so cute and I thought it would be fun for fabric postcards. I'm running a little late, but I have a Thanksgiving one that's going out. And then I have my stack of e.l.f. ones. Now these are going to be the Christmas 2023 ones. I'll be sending these out to my patrons and I will also be putting any extra ones that aren't going to friends and family and patrons into the shop. I have some leftover snowflake ones from last year that I plan on giving away during the live streams in December. So all of my little elves, they have a variety of little cuffs here and then they all have different little shoes, little boots, whatever they are. But everyone has the red and white stockings. So I just went into my scrap bin and I used as much as I could to get duplicates so you'd have a left foot and a right foot. While it would be fun to have different ones, sometimes I think it's best to just keep them matchy-matchy. I'll also be taking one of these out and keeping them for myself. I've been saving one of the collections and stuff, or if I make a fabric postcard that I really like, I've gone ahead and decided to save it for myself to put it up in my collection and go on my fabric postcard wall. So my next step is to do all of the stitching all the way around. That is, that is really the most boring part for me because you're just sitting at the sewing machine round and round and round. Round and round and round. It, it's really a monotonous process. Cutting these out by hand, all of the different applique pieces. Stitching them down was not very fun, but... I guess it'll probably take about the same amount of time, but when stitching them down, at least you're kind of moving around. When you're doing the outside border, it is really a lot of monotony. So I will set up my brother's sewing machine. I use my little sewing machine, this one right here. When I do fabric postcards, I might just set it up to the side and then work on stuff here on my big juki and then work on a couple of postcards and just keep going back and forth. I need to have these done before the 1st of December so that they can go out and be received in plenty of time for Christmas and also in case anyone wants to purchase any from the shop. So your scrappy word for today is I would say monotonous, but that's kind of a big word to put down. So let's just go with boring. What part of the process of whatever you're working on really becomes quite monotonous or boring for you? When you're making a quilt, what is your favorite part? What is your least favorite part? We all know our favorite parts, but the least favorite part. For mine, it's usually putting all the layers together, basting the layers. I don't mind doing the small quilts now because I spray baste them with the spray glue from Heat and Bond, but the big bed size ones I still pin, so it takes a lot of time to get all those pins in, get everything prepared for quilting. I used to dislike the binding, but now that I'm doing the single fold and I have a fun foot for my sewing machine that allows me just to ride right along the edge, I've been enjoying putting the binding on by machine. I do enjoy hand stitching the binding, but it can take a while and it's really, I really need to find that time where I can just sit down to hand bind instead of jumping up or dozing off or taking care of a cat that's screaming somewhere. There's always something that makes me go somewhere and do something. So I need to find that time where I can just sit down. And usually when I find that time, I'm knitting or something like that. I miss my knitting and crochet, so I need to get back into that and the hand embroidery. There's just so many fun things to do and such a little bit of time in the day. So tomorrow's Thanksgiving here in the U.S. I hope everyone is traveling safely for those of you that are traveling. Everyone else, I just hope you have a great Thanksgiving. I imagine many of you might not even watch this video to afterwards, or I might be keeping you company while you're making the snack trays or the pies. Because let's face it, the best part of Thanksgiving 
is the pies. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. I will see you guys next time. Bye.